So in this video, we're going to talk about the lower structures of, of um, ions, some uh, molecular ions. And then uh, we're pretty much just going to go over like how we derive other structures and then my method of, of going through the thought process. So let's say you're given, um, let's say you're given NH4 plus, right? How would you come up with the lower structure for this ion? Well, anytime you see a positive charge on the ions in chemistry, it means the, the compound has lost one electron. So that's a very key concept. So I have some videos earlier that explains how we come up with the, the number of valence electrons for each atom. All right, so you could go back and watch those. But for nitrogen, nitrogen has a valence electron, has five valence electrons, right? We have four hydrogens. And hydrogen each consists of one val valence electrons each. So the total, my total electron count, right? My total electron count should be equal to five plus four times one because there's one there's one valence electrons for each hydrogen. But remember, I have lost an electron, so this becomes you could essentially minus that from one, so this becomes five plus four times one which is four, that will give us nine minus the one electron that we lost. So in total, we should, have, we should have an electron count of eight electrons, right? So if we want to draw the structure again, remember the central atom is usually uh, the, the, the atom or the element, um, the first element in the molecular compound. So I'm going to put my nitrogen in the middle and I could just simply at this point form single bond simple because, uh, that's usually the first thing we do uh, in terms of um, coming up with our compounds is we form single bonds and then we go from there, right? Because remember, each compound usually consists of a single bond, right? So we have total eight electrons to place. Let's count our electrons and see how much we've placed thus far. So we have two electrons because it's a single bond. Again, one from the hydrogen, and one from the nitrogen. So two, four, six, eight. Right, and that's what we see here. So we know this is a plausible structure for the ammonium ion. And so, usually with ions, we put them in brackets, right, and write overall charge on it. Right, so plus one in this case, right, or you could just leave it as plus. Right, let's look at the next one. Let's say you're given uh, BH2 minus. How would you come up with the lowest structure for that? Well, I'm simply going to write out my atoms again. I have two hydrogens, one boron. I'll look on the periodic table. Again, boron has one valence electron. I'm sorry, not one, but three valence electrons, rather. Right, so I have three valence electrons. I have two hydrogens, right? And remember, hydrogen each gives me one valence electron. It has one valence electrons in its shell. But remember, this negative sign is the opposite of the positive. So this negative sign means that I have gained one electron. I have gained one electron, so this is essentially plus one. So my total count, right, my total number of electrons should be three from the boron plus two times one from the hydrogen. So far we have five plus the one that we've gained from the charge, right? So we should have six electrons total, right? So again, the convention most times, right? So there, it's it's different in some cases like water, H2O, where the central atom is actually oxygen and it is not the leftmost um, atom in molecular formula or the first atom in molecular formula. But if, but in most cases, the first atom in molecular formula is usually a central atom. So remember, we said at this point we could form single bonds again, and then we we see we could see where else to put our electrons. So thus far, we've we have six total electrons to place. And how many we've placed thus far? We have two, four, right? So where do we put the additional two that we're missing? We can't put it on our hydrogens because remember, hydrogen only has one valence electron, right? Hydrogen only has one valence electron, one valence electron, and so therefore it cannot occupy any more electrons. So therefore, the uranium electrons has to be on the boron. So I put my uranium electrons. I put my parentheses there's my negative one charge or again my negative charge right so this is two four six and that would be a plausible structure for the bh2 minus ion 
right? Again, I hate this negative one, but again, I write it for convention. Okay. Let's try another one. Let's say you were given CLF4 plus, right? How would you come up with the lowest structure for that? Well, we have chlorine. I have four. Um, I have four fluorines, right? Plus, I have a positive charge. So that means I've lost one electrons. We're gonna we're gonna factor that in a minute. In a minute, right? So chlorine again. If you look on the pair table, it has seven valence electrons. Again, if you don't know how we're coming up with this, I have an earlier video that explains how we derive of the number of valence electrons in each atom shell, right? Again, chlorine is a halogen, just like fluorine, so this should also has this should also have seven valence valence electron in its shell. So let's count the total electrons that we have to place. So four times seven, right? Because we have four fluorines each of seven valence electron a piece, right? So four times seven that's twenty eight plus seven, that will give me thirty five. But remember, the positive charge means that I have lost electrons, lost one electron. So my total electron uh, total electrons that I have the pace would be 34 electrons right so again remember I said that the, the atom the, uh, the element usually um, the furthest left in the form is usually a central atom and so if we place chlorine uh, if we place chlorine yeah, that should not be yeah. so if we place chlorine in the middle right let's place our four um, fluorine atoms around our central chlorine atom right So those are four fluorine atoms. And again, let's see how many electrons we've used thus far. We've used two, four, six, eight, right? Remember fluorine, uh, fluorine is an atom or an element that has to satisfy the octet rule. Thus far, we've, we've only had, we've only have, we only have two electrons around our fluorine atoms thus far. So we need to place six more electrons to give it that full octet. So let's go ahead and place our electrons since we've only used two, four, six, eight, and we have 34 electrons to place. So we're way below what our count should be. So let's place our six, additional six electrons around our fluorine atoms. Right? So let's see how many electrons we've used out of the 34 that we have to place, right? So we have two, four, six, eight, right? And you could see this is pretty much the same for all our fluorine atoms. So if we count, this is two, four, six, eight. So we have eight times one, two, three, four. So eight fours, right? So that means eight times four would be 32. And that, so we've used 32 electrons thus far, but we have 34 to place. Now remember, fluorine's octet are full, right? So fluorine's octets, they are full, or they're filled, right? So the only other place we could put the electrons, the remaining electrons, remaining two electrons would be on the central atom, right? And this would constitute, and this will constitute our atom, or, or, or element, or molecular formula. Right? So again, let's try another one. Let's say you were given SF5 minus. Right? How would you come up with the lowest structure for that? Well, I'm going to write out my atoms just like we've been doing for the past couple of minutes, right? So I'm, I have one sulfur atom, but I have five fluorine atoms. Right? Fluorine has seven valence electrons in its shell. Sulfur has six valence electrons in its shell, in, 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 the, um, in its valence. Right? Remember, we have this negative charge here. That means we have to add one electron to our count. Right? So we have to add one electron to our count. So five times seven plus six, right? so five times seven plus six plus one, that will give us a total a total electron count of 42 electrons right so again you could go back and do the math and you would see that you know five times seven plus six plus one that we add from the negative charge should be 42 electrons so again usually 
the, the leftmost element in our molecular formula would be the central atom. So if we go ahead and add sulfur, then we just place our five fluorines around it at this point. Right? So we've used two, four, six, eight, ten electrons out of the 42 that we had to place. So we still have 32 more electrons to place. Now remember, fluorine again has to satisfy the octet rule. We've only placed two electrons around our fluorines thus far. All right? So let's go ahead and fill in our fluorine shells. So let's count how many electrons we've used out of the 30 uh, out of the 42. So we have two, four, six, eight. So fluorine seems to be satisfied. And again, we have this all around the molecule. So this is pretty much two, four, six, eight. Right? So this is pretty much two, four, six, eight. So this is eight of we have eight right here, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so six times eight is forty. All right, so we've used forty electrons of the 42 we have to place. Now remember, fluorine's valence at this moment is filled. Right, so the only other place that the remaining two electrons can be placed is on the central atom itself. Right? And then we simply put our parentheses or bracket and then we add our charge. Right? And that will be a plausible um, structure for the ions. Right? I hope this video helps.